Good morning. Welcome to Harmony of the Gospels. Uh, it's a lesson today, the Harmony of the Gospels, and we're doing lesson 86 today. Uh, this lesson today, we're continuing on with the tribute to John the Baptist that's given by Jesus here in the Bible, and we'll be in Luke chapter 7, uh, verses 24 through 30, and Matthew chapter 11, verses 7 through 15. Most of the time, we'll be in the book of Matthew, um, and then we're going to refer back to Luke, and then we're going to finish up uh, in the book of Matthew. because It's got a little bit longer uh, dissertation uh, on the subject. And then, um, and so, but the overall uh, focus is we need to stand firm on the Word of God, to stand firm on the Word of God. Let's say a quick word of prayer, and then we'll get started. Oh, Lord, I thank you for your grace and your mercy and your blessings in my life, Lord. Just ask you to please uh, be with this message today and use it for your will and way. Oh, Lord, I am of no value when it comes to this world and, 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 and no value in, in life at all. And, Lord, I, all my value is found in you, Jesus. And so, Lord, please, this is your word. Please use it for your will and way. And I love thee, Lord Jesus, and in your name, amen. Okay, let's read uh, in the book of Luke here, and then we'll get started. All right, now I'm sorry, not the book of Luke, but the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 7. The book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 7. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out to, in the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind. What went ye out to see? A man clothed in soft raiment. Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. And what went ye out to see? A prophet, yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. Okay, we'll stop there. All right. Okay, so this the last lesson I taught on this subject. I spoke of John the Baptist and who he was and the disciples that came to see Jesus. Okay, they, they were with John and they left to come see Jesus. We covered all that subject there. So it was a subject of uh, 11 chapter 1 down to verse 6 okay it was a pretty detailed lesson all right jesus reminded these disciples and and john the baptist that they could see that he was the messiah through his actions okay and through the prophecies of isaiah and the prophecy in micah that he was the messiah that was prophesied of because he was doing all the things that his actions showed he was the messiah okay he was doing the things that mankind could not do, okay? <clears throat> I also explained to you that disciples of John came to Jesus while he was healing and while he was teaching to large crowds so that disciples of John could, could actually see what was going on and they could leave to report back to John and, and actually that Jesus was the one that was promised, okay? So but this account picks up here in verse 7. All right, in Matthew 11, verse 7, it states, And as they departed, and as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitude, so the disciples of John began to walk back, to go back to the jail, to speak back to John. And so as they departed, Jesus began to ask the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out in the wilderness to see? Okay, a reed shaken with the wind. Okay, the book of Luke has the same words as Matthew. Jesus is trying to get the people here before him to think about who John is and why they went out to see him, okay? Why was John here on the earth? Why were they uh, compelled to go out and see him, okay? John was not a weak messenger. He was not some milly mouth person that was, that was just, you know, telling you what you want to hear, okay? So John was not swayed by the pressures of human society. No one got John to say what uh, that, that John thought he needed to say. Say John said what the Holy Spirit told him to say, okay? So he was not swayed by the pressures of human society, religion, or political elites, okay? He, nothing was, a, he was afraid of that stuff. So he spoke the words of God, all right? John was a true prophet of God, all right? So in our world today, we have a lot of so-called ministers so-called preachers, so-called teachers, so-called religious leaders of all types in religious belief systems, okay? 
that are swayed by the opinions of the people uh, in their congregations, okay? They're swayed by the pulpit committee. They're swayed by the world. They're swayed by fears of politics, okay? They're swayed by, um, you know, threats um, in their society. They're swayed by those things, all right? We need men, women, children, preachers, evangelists, missionaries, and teachers who will stand firm on God's word and not back down, okay? Jesus now expounds on his message, okay? He says in Matthew 11, verse 8, But what went ye out to see? Why did you feel compelled to go out there and see John? Did you go out to see John because the political council was going to condemn John, and you want to see them to condemn John, to conduct an investigation in him? Was that your purpose, okay? <clears throat> Did he go out to gawk at John because he looked so wild and he preached so powerful, okay? Did he go out because of all the stories you heard? Or did you go out because you needed to repent, okay? A, or, and so Jesus goes on to say, a man clothed in soft remnant, were you looking for that, okay? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. Now Luke 7, verse 25 states, behold, they which are gorgeously apparelled, and live delicately in king's courts, okay? <clears throat> so what were you out to see? Why did you go out to see John? Okay, what was your purpose? <clears throat> John lived in the wilderness. He wore camel skins. He wore a leather girl, girdle around his waist. He ate locust and wild honey. His hair was long. It was unkept, okay? Um, John spoke the word of God. He was blunt about sin, okay? Um, he was blunt about the need to repent and turn from the wicked ways, okay, that you live, okay? John was the one crying in the wilderness to prepare the way of the Lord. He says, make your path straight and repent of your sins and be baptized. That's what John's doing here, okay? You would not find John in a king's house wearing soft raiment, raiment or gorgeously apparel, okay? Matthew 11 verse 9 states, and Jesus asked again for the third time, what went ye out to see? A prophet? Okay, was that what you heard? You wanted to go see a prophet? And Jesus says, yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. John was more than a prophet, okay? In Luke 7, verse 26, it states that Luke uses the term. He says, much more than a prophet, okay? But overall, it's the same phrase as Matthew, okay? All right, so Jesus, again, is trying to get the people to think and consider about who John was, and why did all the people flow out to John? Why were they compelled to feel the need to go out and see him? Was it to God? Was it to be wild? Was it to be odd? Or maybe was it to see him go against the political leaders? Okay. Um, or did you go out to hear, to hear and repent? Okay. Why did you go out? <clears throat> so John was the unique prophet sent to prepare the way for the Messiah. That's who John was. Okay. John was the messenger for the Messiah. With the arrival, John was the last of the line of prophets from the Old Testament, okay? John would start the beginning of the disciples that would follow off after the Lamb of God. John was the end and he was the beginning, all right? So in Matthew 11, verse 10, Jesus says, For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee, okay? All right, so the book of Luke uses the very same statement in Luke 7, verse 27. This reference is, both of these references are both tied to Malachi 3, verse 11. I mean, sorry, 3, verse 1, 3, verse 1, which Jesus quotes here. He says this, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. Okay, so right here, okay, this verse here from Malachi was fulfilled in John the Baptist and Jesus, who is the Messiah. All right, now Jesus continues to explain and give tribute to John the Baptist by saying in Matthew 11, verse 11, Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he, but he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. So 
Whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than John the Baptist. What's being said here? So in the book of Luke, verse 7, verse 28, the emphasis is there is not a greater than John the Baptist. Okay? So well, both these accounts are the same, and the meaning of the tribute is this. Okay? The meaning of this tribute in these verses is this. So John belonged to the age of the Old Covenant. Okay? That's what he belonged to, all right? Which was preparatory to Jesus Christ. Okay? John was the last of the Old Testament prophets, and he paved the way for Christ. Now, in the New Testament age, the church is the bride of Christ. So the least, the least in the New Testament, the least in the New Testament, okay, the New Testament saint, the least, okay, the least little child, okay, or Christian would have a higher privilege in Christ from what the Bible tells us here, all right? Now, here, here we go. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 through 27, I won't, don't want you to misunderstand this, all right? So we'll get into this. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot, or wrinkle, or any such thing, that it should be holy and without blemish. Now, jump down to verse 32 of this chapter, where Paul says, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church, okay? All right, now, truly for me, this is a great mystery for me, okay? It was also here for Paul, all right? So we do know that John the Baptist was identified as the friend of the bridegroom. John 3, verse 29 here, John here identifies himself as the friend. John says, he that hath the bride is the bridegroom. That's Jesus and the church here. But the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because the bridegroom's voice. This is my joy, therefore is fulfilled. Okay, that's what John is saying. He was the friend of the bridegroom. The subject here is something I've often thought about <clears throat> and pondered on. So in my thoughts, okay, is asleep, you know, I, I've thought about this and pondered it often. So all I have is my human understanding of human weddings, human bridegrooms, human brides, human friends, and married life. That's all I've got is human, human me, okay? As a Christian, I have the Bible. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, okay? I have the Holy Ghost for my understanding of God's will and way for me and his word. I'm a member of a local assembly, a church, okay? I know that Jesus Christ is the head of that church, okay? And these things I know, okay? Like man is also the head of his family, okay, and leads his family. Christ leads the church, okay? So my understanding of all this is very earthly. And to get a picture of how this will be in heaven and when it all works out, I must rely on the Holy Spirit to help me see what the Bible says. So it remains a mystery to me because this thing is going to be heavenly, all right? The bridegroom is Jesus. John is the friend of the bridegroom, all right? The bride is the church, okay? How this will look in heaven is a mystery, okay? <clears throat> the New Testament saints and Christians in a local assembly, the church, being a part of the bride is a mystery to me, absolute mystery, okay? So, so as well as Matthew 11, verse 11, the verse identifies he that is least, okay, can be linked to the verse in Matthew 18, verse 4, Whosoever, therefore, shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Okay? How can you re-humble yourself back to a little child as an adult? Okay? It's difficult, okay? okay? Because you've got human pride to deal with, all right? Such a person, though least, is regarded by God to be greater than John the Baptist. So to be humble and to be lowly are two states of the human, all right? that are foreign to our society today, okay? There is much pride in people who always want to raise themselves up over others. God resists the proud, and he giveth grace to the humble. So humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. This was the problem with the religious elites of the day of Jesus Christ. They were prideful, okay, very prideful. Now, 
In the account in Matthew 11, verse 12, Jesus states, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and violence taketh it, take it, it by force. Now, once again, for me, it's another mystery. Okay? I don't understand this. Okay? Okay? God is long-suffering. Okay? And it's a very interesting statement here that we read, but also very clear when you look around and see all the persecution of Christians. Okay? The kingdom of heaven suffers or allows violent attacks, okay? but all things shall be answered for one day, and the Christian knows this. One day Christ will return riding on a white horse to subdue the earth and to judge all mankind. Okay? Right now, the kingdom of heaven allows the violence so that all who are come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ will come okay, through the violence. Okay? And so that the gospel will be spread to all mankind through the love of Christians. All right? That all prophecy is fulfilled and that all words of Christ will return fulfilled. Okay? All right? So that's the purpose. Okay? God has given mankind a way to escape the coming wrath of the Lamb when he comes on that white horse. Okay? And the judgment that will follow before the throne, before the great white throne of God. So there will be a day when the Holy Spirit's influence will be removed off this earth. When this happens, it will be difficult to find Jesus. Okay? So seek him today while he still may be found. Okay? Seek him today. All right? Now, Jesus goes on in Matthew 11, verse 13, to say that the Old Testament is about him, that all the prophets prophesied of the kingdom of God. Okay? And he says in verse 13, for all the prophets and the law prophesied until John about Jesus. Okay? It all prophets. All right? <clears throat> now, they all prophesied, the very law itself prophesied through all the examples of sacrifices, through all the examples of the, the feasts, everything. It all pointed to Jesus Christ, okay? It was very clear, okay? All right, now, so Jesus now states in Matthew 11, verse 14, 14 he states this statement here. He says this, and if ye will receive it, this is Elias, or Elijah, which was to come, okay? Elisha, which was to come. Jesus states, if ye will receive it, all right? This statement is truly the issue with all mankind. Will you believe, okay? Will you receive the gospel? Will you trust in Jesus, okay? Will you trust him as Lord and Savior, as the Christ of God? the very Son of God, the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Jesus is God, okay? Will you trust him, all right? Now, Malachi 4, verse 5, okay? So this statement is a reference to Elijah, okay? Behold, I will send Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Now, now here's the thing. Elijah's mystery was one of judgment. I'm sorry, Elijah's ministry was one of judgment. I'm a bit tired today, I apologize, okay? And redemption. So Elijah would be sent to prepare God's people for the Lord, okay? All right? So John the Baptist ministered in the power and spirit of Elijah. That's how he ministered, okay? Now, at the time that John the Baptist was preaching and baptizing, some people remembered this verse and asked the question in John 1, verse 21. And they they asked what then to uh, they asked that to John what then art thou Elias okay and John saith to them I am not art thou that prophet okay and he answered no so those are the questions that John stated in his response they asked what then art thou Elias and John answered I am not then they asked art thou that prophet and he answered no okay. All right, so John came in the spirit and power of Elijah, okay? He wasn't Elijah in flesh, okay? He came in the spirit and power of Elijah, okay? Where he fulfilled the function and role of that prophet, okay? Jesus now makes a great statement to the people about people in Matthew 11, verse 15. He states this. He says, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. So when Jesus speaks, we need to hear and not discount his words, we need to hear and believe, okay? In Matthew 17, verses 10 through 13, 
when Jesus is talking to his disciples and the disciples ask the question concerning a traditional eschatology of the scribes and teachers, okay, of the law, okay? And this is Matthew 17, verse 10 through 13. So they ask this question. And so, okay, the, of the law. And this was a subject that was taught that Elijah must appear before the coming of the Messiah. Okay, they wanted to know when was Elijah coming back. The disciples are reasoning about the transfiguration of Jesus talking with Elijah and Moses, where they knew that Jesus was the Messiah now. And they wanted to know, well, when is Elijah going to come? But they had not recognized that John the Baptist had come in the power and the spirit of Elijah. They didn't even recognize it, even though they had been taught on it, okay? All right, so when you consider Jesus is saying, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear, in Matthew 11, verse 13. The disciples did not fully hear, okay? They didn't fully hear. This is always the problem with everyone, okay? You don't fully hear or listen or take it in. In Luke 1, verse 17, this is stated, and he, John, shall go before him, as Jesus, in the spirit and power of Elijah, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So the disciples knew this. They knew this. And they knew that Elijah was coming. Okay? And they were like, well, when is he coming? Okay? But they missed the, 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 the heart and the, 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 the actual word here. They missed it. Okay? The spirit and the power of Elijah. Okay? They did not hear like they were supposed to, like so many people today. They don't hear. They read and they let it go, okay? All right? Now let us close with the final verses in Luke 7, verses 29 through 30. And all, and Jesus makes a statement here, okay? Well, and, or the statement's made, sorry. Um, and all the people that heard him, these people actually, these were the people that actually heard. They heard, okay? The publicans, they, they justified God being baptized with the baptism of John. So the poor, the publicans, the people that actually came to repent, they heard and they were justified being baptized with the baptism of God. I mean, baptism of John. Now these folks, there are folks also that did not hear. So what Jesus points out, but the Pharisees and lawyers, the scribes, they rejected the counsel of God against themselves, being not baptized of him, okay? Because they scorned John, okay? The poor, the lowly, the tax collectors, the publicans had shown their willingness to repent of their sins and accept the baptism of John, where the Pharisees and scribes showed their rejection of God's message from John and had refused his baptism. Now, this is a perfect example of the world we live in today. People want their own way. They don't want to hear at all. So they reject, okay? And they will have to face God before the great right throne of judgment, okay? Then you have those who find Jesus. They repent and accept him as their personal savior. So I'm gonna tell you folks, don't waste time here on earth. Repent and accept Jesus today. Thank you for listening. Hope you have a great day.